in this video I'm going to paint this beautiful uh, vase here it's a, a lovely vase or urn uh, and it's a fiberglass urn and it's been done in like a factory default slap it down finish and I'm going to be using artisans mineral paint to create not just not just to paint it but to give it a few different techniques and effects to make it absolutely beautiful um, my name is Carleen West and I'm from Playfessional Creative Studio in Wanda, North Victoria, Australia. And um, I have been, I'm an ambassador for Artisan Paint Company and I've been testing the mineral paints to see what they can do. And I thought I'd bring this to you so you can see what this paint can actually do. Some of the different ways you can use it other than the you know the normal way that most people use mineral paint is just to paint it on and and um, and leave it there um, in saying that there's a caveat this is using artisan mineral paint you may not be able to do it with all mineral paints so before I before there's any confusion because there can be between the different paints I just want to say that different brands of different um, paint products can give you different results so I'm showing you what this paint can do. So um, uh, you may have already mineral paint at home. It may or may not be able to do that, but um, this is what this can do. The colors that we'll be using for this is Iced Vovo. And here's a little stick kind of to show you. It's a very soft um, pink. And we'll be also using Pepperberry which that's that's the beautiful it's I, I'm hoping you can see it on camera but it's almost a mushroom pink so um, we'll be using those two colors and some other products too to um, really jazz it up so I start by I always recommend you give it a good shake And then a good stir now watch when you open the containers I always let it just drip a bit because it'll be on the bottom of bottom of the lid I'll flip it over then make sure you give it a really really good stir so I'll stir both of them so they're ready but I'll be starting with the ice fovo Okay, I've poured out about 50 mils. It's probably, if that, about 50 mils into a, I keep these takeaway containers. Um, they come in handy because I don't think it's gonna use a lot. It does go a long way. So um, I don't wanna over pour. Um, I always, I don't like to dip into the paint. You can contaminate your paint. So I do pour it out into a container. Um, a little tip though, um, when working out of the big, jars what I do is I take the lid off and it's already got if it's mixed up really well and it's already got the paint on the lid I work out of the lid first but I don't put the lid back on I then wash the lid completely when that I've used up all the paint wash it completely dry it and then pop it back on and that way there's no guck you know you don't get this build up on your containers and it and it keeps them um, keeps them without you know any dried paint on it so I just tell you two they are available in two colors 600 mil which is a bit bigger than standard 500 mil 600 mil and the 200 mil okay let's get started I'm using this gorgeous really soft very very soft Italian blue brushes from Artisan now all Artisan's products are Australian made and sourced you know they support Australian manufacturers uh, but haven't been able to source really beautiful brushes here so um, and they don't like the China made ones so these are beautiful Italian ones so they're very 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 soft and um, they take up a lot of paint and go on very very smoothly and are perfect the synthetic ones the very soft synthetic ones are perfect for mineral paint so there's two sizes in these that's the large one there's a smaller one which I could use um, is it here 
I had it here before. I think it's drying because I was using it. And just there's the um the flat one. Okay, so they're really great for varnishes too, these ones, you know, for sealers. Okay, so I always start at the top, uh, sorry, underneath. I flip things around upside down and work upside down first. And then you'll find often it's easier to then flip it around, be able to get to all the top. If you start at the top and then try and flip it around, you can be trying to, you know, you'll have wet paint under here. So I always start at the base up here. And that way when I flip it round, there'll be no paint. And as you can see, it goes, I should have shown you how much paint I had on there, but it, there's hardly any paint on the brush, very little. And it's covering really, really quickly. So I'm just, just a tap on there. So I was using um, this beautiful gum leaf, this gum leaf green on a laundry bin, a big laundry bin this week. And literally one coat covered it. I just looked at it and went, I can't see any strokes. I can't see anything of the wood underneath. It had completely covered it. And um, I, <laughs> but I gave it a quick second coat, a really quick one, because I felt really weird not, not giving a piece more than one coat. But um, that's how good the coverage is. So if you're looking on from overseas, um, there is no stockist overseas at, at the moment. Um, however, it is possible for stockists here or if you, I, can, I can get quotes for overseas, but we, we do find our postage is quite expensive. But if you really, really wanted any of the artisan products, um, We'll perhaps get together with some friends and um, order a bit at once and then it's, it might be worth worthwhile shipping over but otherwise it's quite expensive so at the moment it's just pretty much Australian product Well, I'll speed the video up and finish that first coat and then we can move on to the next step.
Okay, so we haven't even, I've just finished covering this, we haven't even used up the paint that I poured out. There's still probably, well there's still, I don't know, a good tablespoon left in there. Um, now this is what you often can't do with mineral paint. You can't keep playing it with it like this. You put it on very thinly, usually. You've got to leave it alone and then go back in with the next coat. But you cannot keep playing with mineral paint normally because it pulls up and um, it doesn't like to be played with once it starts to dry. This paint will let you do that. So I've been playing with it. I've been putting it on for about five minutes. And this is where I can take advantage of this. So I'll put that colour aside. I'll just put a lid on it. Now I'm going to use the same brush without... I'm going to be lazy and not... not um, not rinse it out, but I will just get rid of the excess on a piece of cardboard. So I'll just take a bit off the brush and then I'll get my little container with the other colour on it with the peppercorn. Pepperberry, sorry, my bad, getting used to the new names. Okay, so I'm going to dip in here I use my bit of cardboard, I'll just take a little bit off and then I'm going to brush into it just randomly Just softly. But ensuring you can't see any paint strokes, so I'm blending it in. Turn it around. I'll move you back so you can see a bit more. There we go. Okay. In. And when I've got a lot of it off my brush, I can either brush it or dab it. I actually like the dabbing. So I'll dab and blend. And like I said, this would normally pull off the paint. Um, it cures very hard, um, but it's it's a bit temperamental. Uh, mineral paints can be temperamental, but this you can do, you can blend all you like, pretty much. But lots of open time. I was just dipping back onto my bit of cardboard because there was just a little bit on the cardboard, so I grabbed that. So one kind of uneven placement, but even blending. Now 
I'm going back in again over the same kind of dark areas, just giving it a bit more colour. Now with um, a lot of paints, water-based paints, you'll find that, um, not all of them, um, but a lot of, most chalk paint and mineral paint, the colours generally dry, these will dry lighter than what you're seeing here. So be bold, allow for that tonal change. Now I'm lightening my touch, tapping a lot lighter. I'm going to wipe off, I'm wiping off my brush, dry it off a bit because it's really, like I said, the paint goes a long way so you can get very easily have too much on your brush when you're blending, when you're trying to soften that blend because you don't need hardly any. It's, um, yeah. All right, it's nice and soft. I think we've got to that stage. And then we'll let it dry. And then we'll move on to the next stage. Okay, so it's a really cold Melbourne morning. Um, top today of 13 degrees. So I've got the heater going and I gave it a little bit of a helping hand with the hair dryer just to speed up the process for video. Uh, but normally, um, you would need a little bit of you need to have a little bit of heat to dry it off if it's freezing cold I get the heater going, but you'll notice um, as it dries That's when you can see the color and that's where you can really see that you can't quite see everything while you're wet uh, But and as it dries the definition between the two colors is um, amplified so so it's not as blended as um, it looks when it's wet now that's fine because what we're doing it's all going to work um, so at this stage I'm switching over there's a couple a couple of stages to go uh, but at this stage we're switching over to a gold and I'm using artisan alchemy which is a beautiful beautiful gold and um, we're going to use that and I'm switching over to art brushes so I've got this little set that I take painting with me all the time and I, I knew that there'd be brushes in here that'd be uh, pretty good for uh, what I want to do, namely this one. Uh, so this is um, quite, it's not too soft, it's soft, but it's not too soft and um, it's not too long and floppy. So this will be good to do the gold with. Um, so any fairly firm, fairly firm, but not harsh, you know, not hard bristled, soft bristle, but firm and bouncy brush. Um, but just a bit smaller the chalk brushes you can do it with chalk brushes, but it's much easier To control so I'm just again. I'm going to use it out of its out of the lid. I've just got um, Cling wrap over the tops just to keep uh, it, That getting dirty and well not dirty, but but sticking and I use the same bit of cardboard take off some of the gold and then I just want to hit the highlights of the decoration. So 
So I'm, I'm stroking this on a bit of an angle so it catches on the edges and brings out those beautiful details. Now a little bit's going to go a long way and as the paint starts to run out on the brush you can move in a bit firmer and blend it a bit. Now I'm going to take a little bit of paint off the cardboard because it's still quite a bit there. So I'm just can you see it? Hang on, I'll put it. Where can I put it where you can see it? Just up there. So you keep going until <coughs> you've got as much gold as you would like. And I want a bit because I know we need a bit for, for this one. But as you see you don't you don't need a lot of actual paint or alchemy. Now this gold does not need any top coat. It's like got its built own built-in top coat. It's nice and hard when you finish, doesn't tarnish. Ticks all the boxes. Putting a bit more gold in the main, on the main parts that you really look at. This dries very quick too, so um, just need a bit more out of the pot now. It'll pretty pretty much be dry as I as I finish. Most of it'll be dry.
nice there. Just need to lift up the camera. Sorry about that jiggle there. can turn it upside down because the top is dry to do that. We'll turn it upside down and we'll have a look and make sure I've missed <coughs> these underneath bits. Which you always do if you don't do that, pretty much. It's very hard to judge what you're painting from the top all the time. the walk around okay so I'll clean off that lid back on and clean off the brush straight away because the brush it will dry on that brush very very quickly and because it's so hard and almost like a sealer um, you don't want it to dry on your brush or it would damage your brush so because it's so robust there we go it's looking pretty I'll zoom in Okay, now we're going back to the deeper pink, the, the pepperberry, and we're going to use it like a glaze. So we'll get that um, same chalk brush that we had before. It's been rinsed out, so it's um, very damp. And I'm using the paint straight, which is scary, uh, because we don't want to lose all of that light light color but in saying that because this is like a semi sheen finish it's quite smooth it will wipe off easily at this stage so i'm using a very of a just a kitchen sponge you can use a chucks cloth or a you know just a lid free cloth or anything you like as long as it's been wet and you've squeezed out all the water so i'm pushing the colour in over 
into the pattern I don't up the top and then I'm wiping it back straight away with the cloth Now you spend a little bit of time on this because you want to wipe back into not just you, you want to get right into these areas here so that you can lift back out that light color and this is where it really blends in so if you're looking at your little mottled effect and thinking oh it's a bit rough it doesn't really matter because this is where it really blends in okay Now work in sections so we don't get ahead of ourselves. Okay, so looking into those little areas, kind of dabbing into those areas. I don't want to take it off the high spot. you miss and then if you need to you know, rinse out which you will rinse it out Just go back over those, highlight the gold, make sure the gold's not covered. And then you work around the whole pot, which I'll do now, and then I'll switch back to the camera and show you close up. Okay, so it's muted the gold a bit, so I'm going to go back in with it, with the gold again, and um, lift out, lift it out. It, uh, the gold wasn't dry, very dry. <laughs> I thought it was dry than it was to go back in with water, you know, water base, but it was, I should have left it go a bit longer. Um, and of course the paint covering it will mute it a bit too. So I do want it more gold. It's great if you don't want a lot of gold, but I do want more gold than that. So I'm going to go carefully now with some highlights and grab some of that gold back. a little bit tricky to do this um, accurately because I can't put my head in front of the camera and let you see right up close at the same time so I'm kind of doing it on a bit of an angle I think it's nice if you can see right up close so <coughs>
Now I want to give it um, an appearance of having a bit of gold foil on it. And so I'm use this shape brush is good for that. Um, I'm just kind of doing cross hatching with it and dabbing the gold on. Gives the appearance of gold sheets, gold leaf coming through. Soften on the corners and edges, so it'll break break through. Trying not to make it too even. And the great thing is, if you, you do too much gold or too much pink or you know too much of anything, you can just go back in again. And you just keep playing until you've got what you want, the amount that you want. If you want it lighter, darker, more of the ice vovo or more of the the um, pepperberry or more of the gold, just or even. Another colour. Okay, we'll move you. thing in. Oh, sorry. That will help.
and you use the same dabbing approach all around until you've got it looking the way you want it. Now go back in with a really stiff toothbrush, grab a bit of ice vovo, spray the toothbrush with water away from your work and then hold it at a distance and just flick the toothbrush to get little, little dots on it. some of the big ones so they just blend in a bit and you really want fine ones so it might be a little bit hard to see on camera but again I'll zoom in so you can see it see it all together I'll rinse this and do the same with the other colour, the pepper fairy. The brush will have a bit of water on it already from rinsing. Dip it in there just to be sure I will put a bit more. I'm just giving massaging the toothbrush. This looks lovely over the gold. It's only very, very fine, but helps add to the, um, the texture. 